But that was something special there. But that was a moment. You feed off that energy. You feed off that momentum because people gonna always try to compare it. Oh, if it's hotter than this, now it's two separate things. It's two, it's another different. It's a different lane. Mm. Hopefully, this lane be longer than the lane that I created for when I um when I had that driving force to put out those projects. I want this lane to have its full potential to be to be something that can surpass that because it's given its own right. It's given its own identity. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not trying to compare it to this and just add on. It's like even though at the end of the at the end of the day, it's going to be part of my whole co- collection. But as I'm making it and as I'm telling my whole story mm. and I'm giving my story and I'm still in it and I'm still cr- creating my vision as I go along, I want to make sure everything is separate and give everything its own identity. And then, you know, as time goes by, people create it. They, like, they put the story together for you. <laughs> it's better that way when it's like at the end and you like, oh, that's what you was doing. Oh, that's what you was doing because it's like it's not it's incomplete right now. This album might be tied into my first mixtape that I ever dropped or might be tied into my second mixtape so everybody can really understand visually and creatively where I can go with mm. when I make music that I'm not just doing it just to put songs out. I'm not just doing it to just name albums, certain titles. When I said Pluto, I knew it wasn't the planet no more. I named myself that. Now it's like, you got to mention me every time you think of Pluto. <laughs> like every time you think of space, it's like you think of a rapper and to space is two different, totally different worlds. But if you get it from, like, thinking, like, oh, man, what is he talking about space? I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it for a legacy that's just bigger than what you can really see at the time. You know what I'm saying? It's longevity. Everything that I do is for the longevity. That will fuel my fire because I understand, like, this, I'm always the future. You know what I'm saying? That's my name. Like, I'm always keeping you guessing. Uh, to what he did, what he do it for, why is he doing it for? That's like, I'm living up to the name. Like, it's powerful. You know what I'm saying? And I got to, that's just what I do. That's just the position that I'm in. You know what I'm saying? As an artist, as a man, as just a person that's just doing music, as a a, a person that still dreams. Where did this come from, man? Well, I mean, were you a big thinker as a kid? It's like chess, you know what I'm saying? I, like I'm playing it's like playing chess. It takes time. It just takes a lot of thought just before you make certain moves. So it just takes a thought when you listen to my music or you're wondering why I'm doing this. It's just gonna take time for you to think it out. You know what I'm saying? You if you're trying to figure it out in that moment, you might guess it right way off the top, but you know what I mean? Nine times out of 10, you ain't mm. gonna be able to figure me out. Which is perfect. Which is perfect because it's always being able to reinvent myself to keep yeah, you guessing. Yeah, you wanna yeah, be yeah. able to be in that reinvention stage where you keep people on their toes when they don't get bored. Yeah. Which you, because they get bored, they figure they got you figured out. They never, there's nothing to look from you because it's like, it's no looks. I'm not giving the people the right looks. They just already know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? I'm always giving them expect the unexpected. I've been preaching that from the beginning. Like yeah, yeah. creating the wave and creating the vibes and being able to be the trend and sending the, being a trailblazer, you know what I'm saying? A lot of you don't even get credit for. But it ain't even about getting the credit because everybody gonna jump the gun, you know what I'm saying? From the beginning, that's why I say it's hard to just catch on right away. If you catch on right away, you super special. You're a genius. But if you don't catch on right away, then it's not it's like it's not a bad thing. It's just like you just gotta take your time and be patient and the truth will reveal itself. So who are you on this record? What's the name of the album first? I don't even know that yet. Do you know it? Have you, have you worked it out? Future Hendrix. It's called Future Hendrix. Finally, we get the Future Hendrix record. Finally. Finally. Hey, man. This has been years in the... In I wanted the... to do it right, so I want to be able to put it behind me. Just the whole name, Future Hendrix, and me being different. Man, I'm so and happy me, about that. And me um, feeding off Jimi Hendrix and mm. just what it represents to me as being different and someone to come from, from where I'm from to being able to... To, uh, to just do it a different way than just so, what it was what was expected. And that's just what Future Hendrix represent. It's just being different and just being different from your environment and being able to embrace it and being able to own it and walk with confidence and keep your head up and be proud about who the person you are and being different and embracing that, you know what I'm saying, that you're not like everyone else, being a person that want to stand out. And you couldn't have made the Future Hendrix record before because you hadn't gotten to that point yet in your life? I haven't got to the point yet in my life where I can be able to get to the Hendrix side yeah. and just really make my fans understand it. And to now, just from the dressing to uh, just everything that has done took place up until now. I was in the studio with you, what was it, two, three years ago? Right. And you were having this conversation then, man. That's, that's like, I can vouch for this. You were saying people aren't ready for future Hendrix. It's going to take years before future Hendrix comes. So you're already thinking like, yeah, now it's the time. I felt like it's the time. Two, three years, just they wasn't ready. They wanted the future. They wanted the real sisters. They wanted me to be ratchet, just most, say the most disrespectful shit. And I understand it. That's what music is. It makes you just like feel different kind of ways. You know what I'm saying? And some of the most the grateful shit 
you can you can say or just the most goddamn ignorant you can say it 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 moves someone else it might move a person who got a master degree in college and got them who went to college or like it moved them it means something else to them it might be their inspiration to do something else in their life you know what i'm saying so you don't understand like when you're making music it just music move you in a different way it heals you at times when you like man did that song did it you like yeah, that's that was the song that did it for me. You know what I mean? You'd be like, man, why was it that? It's just because of the music, it might speak to you in a different way than it speak to someone else. But that's just that's why you got to give it your all when you do do a song. You got to be yourself on it because you never know who it might touch. And at the time, I felt like I wanted to touch the people that it needed to touch. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to touch on the people that felt like, like man, he might be over with or man, can he bounce back from his relationship when his relationship was like pretty much the focal point of my career at times, when it was bigger than my career at times, can he get bigger than his relationship was? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like to be able to get over that hump, it's just like Nas Future Hendrix. I had to get over that hump. I didn't want to give them Future Hendrix before they understand that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Trials and tribulations and paying dues, that's what it's about. That's what it's all about. If you can't get over that, then mm. you ain't going to be able to understand mm. certain things that's going to come up in your life, man. There's so many obstacles that you're going to have to face throughout your life, but you can't give them everything on, on the first go around because they might not understand it. They're going to understand that, man. We we break barriers. So when I put future hindrance in front of you, you're going to be able to give it to it. You're going to give it the right listen. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to look past like, man, what is this dude trying to be hindrance? Like, you know that it ain't like, it's not a Jimmy Hendrix. You know that. You know, it's future hinges. It's something totally different. You know, I'm not playing a good time. You know that, but people that know this over a period of time, if I would have did it a long time ago, they probably would have thought first off the rip that I got to have, like, he got to be playing a good time. What is he doing? Like, is he doing some live bands? Too, li- too literal, yeah. Yeah, it's too, like, on point. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. now it's just the vision. Now, visionally, people done just went to that level with me. Now they done, they, they done walk the same path with me. They understand where I'm going with my music, so they're going to give it a different kind of listen. Mm. They listen to it. They ain't listening to it for no rock and roll. They, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? They listening to it for future. Let's talk about Draco, which I had to look up. I had no idea what Draco was. Now I, I know. Draco season. Yeah. It's Draco season. Draco season. Yeah, it's a bad thing. Mm. But hey, man, it's life. When you made that song, that vibe, what were you trying to capture on that song? Because there's going to be a video for that, too. All the Dracos that was in the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to capture it without, without them going off. You know what I mean? The <laughs> yeah. energy. Yeah, the energy of it. Yeah, that's, what you was, that's what I was capturing, the Dracos that was around. You kept it in the, in the, in the family for the record, as always. You know what I mean? It's always, it's you, it's 808 Mafia, it's, it's yeah. Metro. Yeah, it's okay. we've been super close like this whole, this whole time. You know what I mean? Just being able to get that new sound. You know, yeah. I like to be able to come at, with that new sound. It's just that my young boys, they, uh, my this young, my young dude. Yeah, D.Y. Right? D.Y. crazy. Unbelievable. He the new dude. You did he, Super Trapper, right? He the new, he the next one. Yeah. Like, D.Y., I always had that next one every time. Like, well, I go and search you, for him. Because everyone gets busy. Because everyone else gets really busy, and then you always find time for each other. I found D.Y. in the Shot town cut. Actually, Southside, I found him in a Southside. Uh, my dude, Southside, uh, for 808 Mafia. That's my little brother. But, um, man, I'm glad that he's a part of the project. I'm glad he even around. Like, his energy is everything to me, too. Like, young, hungry, super talented. And you take a look at what's happening for a friend of yours like Metro, who's yeah. come up, certainly in the free Metro, bands operation. Metro out of here. Out, gone. Yeah, that's the plan. That was the plan from the beginning to make sure he was out of here. Mm. And, and it happened, so I feel like everything was accomplished. It went the way it's supposed to went. You know what I'm saying? He a household name, and that's what it's about. It's about building the team up to becoming a household name. You becoming your own person, and you being a boss, and you bringing something to the table. Mm. I mean, you you know, you you have a legacy with incredible producers, you know, in, in collaboration mode. But um, what, one we haven't seen you guys, or at least in my mind, um, working too much with lately is Mike Will, and I wonder where you're at with him. We haven't been working together for a minute. We haven't worked together since probably like back after before Monster. Mm. So it was just like the wave that I was going through, like when I was going through the sound process and be able to create, like I say, he was becoming a house. He was already a household name at that point. So it was like mm. him working with different artists and him being able to spread his his catalog out and him being able to build his label up and him having artists, you know what I'm saying? And you want to, you don't want to smother his whole sound and his whole catalog and everything that he have to present for himself and being able to make sure 
his label is taken care of and his his immediate people that's you know what I'm saying that he's bringing up mm. you know what I mean because it become a business and and once it, and once you get in the business and, and you make everything around you become a business like everybody else become household names you got to put some time into it and I wanted to be able to give him his own space you know what I mean not get my own space and to build something up and give Metro time so once I wasn't working with Mike Will just building Metro up. And now it's got the point where Metro, he'll be able to spread his catalog out, build his name up, your household name. And now I'm going on to finding that new young dude, the new hungry dude. Mm -hmm. It's about finding the new hungry. If you want, you will never go to the new next dude if you always will just stay on the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to change up and change the cycle up, man. So what do you look for? How do you know DIY is the guy? How do you know? Just an incredible sound. It's just a consistency. With, with how he delivered, you know what I mean? His deliverance on the, his his beat packaging and just his ambitious, his, you just be able to see it on him. Like, you ever, I done seen the time after time after time. So I understand mm. once you get in that zone as a as a producer, when you get in that zone to be really making that transition in your life, like, mm. Mm. you got to have that ton of vision because it's like certain things are just going to happen personally in your life that's going to take away creatively. But you got to use that to channel in your energy. Your, you you got to channel that energy, your personal energy, and start putting your music where you start having a ton of vision where it's just like you're knocking those beats out. You can hear it in the, you can hear it in your sound. Mm. You can hear the frustration. You want to hear your beats when you frustrated. You want to hear the beats when it sound like you was partying. You want to hear all those different moments. You want to be able to collect all those different moments to make it, uh, 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 just being able to be aware around the producer. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he in that zone where, he blocking a lot of things that's going on in his life, probably, and he putting it in the music, mm. whether whatever's happening. You know what I'm saying? You can be able to hear all. He can hear his story now. You sound laser guided on this project, like totally zoned out, as you said before. Everything switched to black, focused on one particular thing. Right. But you had to. But you came out of some chaos. I mean, it's been a bit. It's been tough. I mean, there's been some real stuff played out in public in the last couple of years. It's been tough, yeah, distracting, been tough. right? Yeah, it's been a lot of distractions, and that's what me part of me turning my social media off. I don't want to be distracted. Mm. It's like when you first come in the game, you don't have a discretion because nobody knows you. So it's like, who gives a f whatever they got to say about you? You know what I'm saying? And, you don't, and even if you don't care about it, certain people are giving it the attention that's around you. Mm. So when people are giving it the attention, it's a distraction for you. And you're only giving the same, the mental state as when you first came out and you recorded to oppose. And now when you're dealing with so many distractions, you're still trying to record the same music and mm. touch the same people. Mm. And expand those people and expand your fan base. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to tune those distractions out. And it's hard sometimes to tune certain distractions out when you got to give it attention. And you have to respond to certain emails. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you just build your team up to be as strong as you. And when you build your team up to be as strong as you, you'll be able to focus on the music where certain distractions um, I can tune out because my team is just handling it. Yeah. If they handle it, certain things that they can handle and certain things that I have to be there for, I just have to be there for. Was there a moment when it was uh, the chaos was getting was getting too much for you, when it was just too too many cameras and too much attention and too much everything else kicking off around you at, at the same time? It's never enough attention because that's just the lifestyle I live. I understand we just cameras, everybody in here working. I don't know that just come with. If it wasn't a lot of people and it wasn't enough attention, then, it's I might, then it's a problem. But there is, a, but there's such a thing as, as negative attention too. Then it just comes from life lived, right? And ultimately, yeah, yeah. Because can, even negative attention, you try to hide as much as possible, but certain things is gonna come out. People don't understand. You're a superstar. You're a global superstar. You're gonna come in contact with certain girls. Just can't keep y'all a secret. It's just hard because you want to tell all her friends. Want to tell her mama. She want to tell. Her. She's just so excited about being next to a superstar, being next to Future. Want to be like, man, I'm in the studio with Future right now. You might want to tell somebody to just record my music without me even telling them to record it. They just got their phone just sitting over just like, because they're so excited to be in the studio session, being around me. They've been seeing me on TV. So you understand it, and then you then sometimes you're like, man, I invite you into my personal space for a reason, like for it to be personal and not to be put out in public. So some people that don't understand that certain public that you put out can backfire, and they can, it can work to my disadvantage for just being my image. It don't work to disadvantage of me losing anything, but disadvantage as far as like, um, my image being out there, being perceived or being per as the person that's probably not me. They just paint a picture, and there's just so many different situations just paint a picture that's not me. And I'm not responding to it. I'm not tweeting about it. So people just got an image in their head about future that's really not me. But it's, I understand it, you know what I'm saying? That that's why I got a chance to just block off those distractions, shut down my social media, and I got a chance to address every situation in my music. So this album's going to come out. 
and it's back to business, you know, in terms of public facing. Mm -hmm.